Well, there's the darkness. They believe in a thing called love. Carl, do you? This is XFM 104.9. That is my favourite band at the moment. You love them? I, I absolutely love them. I think they're funny. I think they're straight down the line with a little bit of tongue in cheek. Mm. Oh, brilliant. Did you see them on Jules Holland last night? I didn't night? sadly, no. Brilliant. Were they good? Yeah, absolutely jump. Oh. I mean, Jules didn't know what to do. <laughs> was he was he playing to Boogie Woogie? He, they wouldn't let him play Boogie Woogie over well, the song. That's what I mean, that's why he stayed back. But, uh, I can't imagine it was very good then. He shook the- it, I'm it surprised was, you say they were good. It, it was Jules no, wasn't thinking I mean, I, I, I thought, I, I, I thought, hold on, this is missing something. Yeah. This, this is missing someone from Squeeze vamping over them. <laughs> exactly, But, um, yeah. they did, they did well without him. Extraordinary. Uh, yeah. Well, Here we are then, we're back, XFM 104.9. Car had to leave early last week, but, um, you can you stay to the end this week, mate, or? Yeah. Yeah? You don't, you don't need another holiday. Oh! Oh, he's started already. I mean, you Steve's know, made you look like a bit of a twat already, and well, it's only five past one. But the only reason you don't go on holiday is because you have to spend money. <laughs> oh, and he's going straight back! Well, he's going straight back! I can't come back to that. <laughs> oh, it's just, dear. it's just, uh, it's only, mate, it's just absolute, that was, that was Although the last holiday the he had, case. last holiday Steve had, he, he sort of found a third world country so he could live like a mm. king for a week. It was Cuba, wasn't it? Going to Cuba, amazing. You can leave, you can almost rule the place. <laughs> if it weren't for Castro, I'd have been in charge, kind of cash I was flashing around. <laughs> they do, they do anything for a dollar over there. It's extraordinary, literally. I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Definitely, and I went to Kenya said, before that. So he thought to the prostitute, said no. Mm. You were going. <laughs> yeah, well it was two dollars, I mean I'm not made of money. <laughs> Did you have a good holiday, Carl? Uh, yeah it was alright, it's alright. Went down to Cornwall. Now so you were going to the Some odd people down there, Steve. Well, <laughs> don't look at me, I'm not from Cornwall. Well you're from that sort of area. Well not really, but never Genetically mind. he means. Right. They're weird. Mm. Well you must have slotted right in. <laughs> Why are they weird? What do they look like? It's all, uh, sort of odd people. Uh, a lot of old people, but not just old, sort of messed up old. What do you mean, messed up old? It's just got, you can't just say that. There's, there's, there's... There was a woman with a funny neck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in what way what, was it funny? Why did she have a funny neck? If you were writing an essay, you wouldn't say there was this woman with a funny neck. How would you describe it? She, uh, sort of had her head, like, pointed down all the time. Like, Don't do it, this is radio. No, but just for you, I'd be like, like yeah. Like yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. So brilliant. I don't you, know. I was saying to Suzanne, what, what happened? You know. What do you think? Because Suzanne knows everything. That's the yeah. good thing about her being with you. You just ask her what happened to her, and Suzanne goes, "Carl, I don't know. Yeah. I haven't been here before." Does Suzanne, she... your girlfriend, or mummy, as you call her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sparks are flying. Yeah. I got a little bit of chocolate. Can you just lick a tissue and wipe it off? Oh. No, she said it might have been like, because back in the olden days they carried stuff on the- The olden <laughs> days? What do you mean the olden days? <laughs> this woman was probably what, 50? Uh, no, she looked about 70. Yeah. But like I do on Cheeky Freak of the Week, right, I always turn it round and we get like something good out something of it. Something positive, yeah. yeah. I said, I said to Suzanne, I bet she finds a lot of money. Sure. <laughs> Always staring at the ground, yeah. <laughs> oh always, dear. Always, always oh. Good. So, um, you're Maybe back. she just had, uh, new shoes and she was admiring them. Yeah. Did you think of that? Before you point the finger and judge? Mm. Or, or a necklace was too heavy. <laughs> exactly. So, you're back ref refreshed. So, uh, what have we got for this week? Have we sort of, cause we didn't meet last night, which, uh, we usually meet no, sort I, of five. I called you and said it'd be good if we could, uh, you know, I wasn't getting back into London well, I was until, up for it. I was until up half for past it. seven, yeah. but, yeah. yeah, but we all need to be there. It's not yeah. just me and you being there. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah. yeah. No, you're right. I mean, you're absolutely right that I wasn't there yet cause I wasn't willing to, uh, just be you know, governed by your particular schedule. You want to jet back in from another of your holidays right, it wasn't at a holiday. eight o'clock. It wasn't a holiday though. Well, so what, so you what do you mean? What, 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 what do you mean it wasn't a holiday? What was it? Uh, he was, well, it was a treat, wasn't it, from my mum and dad. So it wasn't a holiday. I, what, I so you away. didn't enjoy the five days off? You'd rather have been here moaning eight hours a day, seven hours a day. You see, we said last week that you're always whinging. Here you are whinging now. I'm and moaning. you're saying it's not even a holiday. You're saying it's not even a holiday. What right. was it then? Would like a nurse who took sick children to Florida, would they say having a great holiday? Sorry, what, what, what particular ailment did your parents have for the week that they had to, they had to fly in mm. uh, Carl Pilkington, MD? <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? Well, all right, it was holiday. Well yeah. then, good. Now some honesty, now some truth. So you us. came in, you came back from your holiday, you wanted to start back to work straight away, Steve couldn't be bothered to meet. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. So we've got nothing prepared for this. Well, you can rely on Rockbusters. <laughs> right, that's coming We've got up. nothing. <laughs> uh, Monkey News. Even though you were away, you were still working. Still doing stuff. Did you Don't go to the Monkey it. Sanctuary? I'll tell you about that. Tell right. us about it. Play a record. Right. What do you want? That's Smashing Pumpkins. Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah, I thought yeah, an old yeah, classic yeah. from them. Cherub Rock. Yeah. 
Smashing Pumpkins, Cherub Rock. That, of course, Rick, is available on their greatest hits. Brilliant. If you want to. I, I mean, that, that's how I rock, so yeah. I'm, I know, I know they, uh, I'm very much the shape of a cherub as well. Well, now. indeed. Indeed. Naked with a, a yeah. couple of- And a rosy big arse. And a, tr a trumpet. Yeah. <laughs> Do they have trumpets? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I've just had an email here, um, Monkey News. Yeah. From a listener. Yeah. Monkey spotted holidaying in Cornwall. <laughs> a chimp, <laughs> a chimp was spotted holidaying in Cornwall last week after befriending a family of three. One onlooker said, it was incredible. He dressed and behaved exactly like a human being. He even settled the hotel bill at the end of their stay. The only telltale sign was his lack of table manners and the incoherent babble when he opened his mouth. <laughs> there we are, so- Well, uh, we do that, Carl. That's the listeners, Carl. That's oh. Joanne. Oh. Amusing, articulate. Accurate. She Accurate. remembered exactly who was there and everything, sitting yeah. in the bill. It's all there. So, I mean, even though people think that you're slightly simian, uh, you know, slightly less than human on the evolutionary ladder, they do listen to you. <laughs> so, I, mean, I, don't know, I don't know who's more stupid in the end, you or the listeners. Well, you may recall, Rick, at the end of last week when Carl had to shoot off early, uh, we issued a little request yeah. for listeners just to bombard Carl's email with um, just pointless emails that really weren't about anything, just to clog up his email for when he returned. Yeah. Rick, they sent them all to us. Brilliant. I mean, that's the kind of listeners that we've got. We've got reams here on our email of just junk. I mean, it's like a Marx Brothers plot, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, ludicrous. just listen. I listen I got, to what we say. I got one, uh, about a shaved cat. Well, that's not pointless. I'll be reading that later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be I'm happy. That'll keep me going for a couple of weeks. Yeah. I'll be reading that later. Did you get to the Monkey Sanctuary? Because this was the big thing. You were going into Cornwall, you were going to visit the Monkey Sanctuary. I've never seen someone more excited. You had two days put aside for the Monkey Sanctuary. Oh, I know. How did it go? Monkey World? Um, we were on our way, right? I found like a little, uh, in the little cottage that we had, right? It's like a little, uh, little folder, mm -hmm. you know, with little leaflets in saying if you, you know, if you're into mountains, you want to go here. Yeah. If you're into castles and that. Uh, little castle monkey world. on the leaflet, right? So I thought, I'll be needing that. Took that out, made sure that's safe and yeah. that, right? We get in the car, getting ready to go. Uh, my dad says, where is it? I look on the back. It's in a place called Low or something like that, right? Yeah. So, uh, we're on our way. Can't believe me luck. It's gonna be a great day and all that. Yeah. And then, uh, start looking at the leaflet, right? And, uh, noticed. Didn't have any chimps there. Yeah, it's not, it's not Monkey World. It wasn't a Monkey World. Well, how, what, no. what was it called then? Something like... M m monkey Town. <laughs> yeah, it, it was just, it, it had like woolly monkeys in it. That's, that's what it, it had was. what? Woolly monkeys. What are woolly monkeys? Those things that uh, Johnny Vegas off the advert. Right. Read to them. They're dumped now since ITV Digital yeah. went under, so they just put them in a cage. I don't no, understand. They're woolly, they're, they're like, um, they're sort of like little fluffy, little baboon type things, woolly monkeys. I mean, not, it's not your chimp. It right. is not your, it's not your classic chimpanzee. So did the car screech to a halt? It, it was like, it was <laughs> yeah. like, it was like the mission in Armageddon. As you said, abort. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're on the way back. <laughs> so how far uh, have you got before you bothered to read the leaflet? Uh, probably about five miles right. away from where we were. So what did you do with yourself? You must have been distraught. We well, went they to... broke down and then they heard banjo music. No, we went to a, uh, sort of a, an amusement place. Really? Arcade. I'd love to see you in that. What, with, with putting those coins in so it has to roll down and they go flat and then an arm pushes it them. It was one of them. Really? But I I've spent years on that when I was little. Well, there's oh. a new one. I can't be bothered explaining it, but it's a con. Uh, we went to this place, right, my mum and dad had been there before, and yeah. they said, you'll love it, it's brilliant, it's got like, a, a war bit in it. A war bit, right. Yeah, like, cause they know I'm into tanks and stuff. Yeah. So you'll be loving that. So, sorry, I didn't know you were into tanks. No. Well, they're alright. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, right. it's gone from one of his childhood passions to where they're alright. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> Go on. And, uh, but it was, it was... It was awful. I mean, my mum and dad had been there before and he said, no, you'll love it, but yeah. it was a, like, a really miserable day. Sure. Right? Uh, all the rides and that were broke. Yeah. Broke? Uh, it just reminds you of Manchester. <laughs> 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 My dad just ended up, uh, he was more interested, there was a really fat family there. <laughs> well, presumably he was breaking into the machines, <laughs> trying to scoop off the cash. <laughs> I caught. like the fact that those poor fat family were going, why are those people looking at us? Yeah. Oh, do you want a ride one? No, but they, they we're, were not, we're not a ride. They were <laughs> massive and he just like, look at that, look at the state of that. A whole family. Yeah. Just, you know, fat. Bloaters, yeah. Oh, uh, No, but he, 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 because fat, there's no, no need for it, is there? 
and he, he was really like, oh god. And then he wanted to follow them into the house of mirrors to see what they'd look like. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but my mum, my mum had got uh, bored. She went off to buy a little uh, Snow White figure. She couldn't believe her luck. It was only two ninety nine. Yeah. She thought it was going to be really expensive. Sure, so she's got one of them. Yeah. Uh, so she enjoyed that. And then my dad says, "Come on, we go in. It's rubbish, this." <laughs> but the fat family wouldn't let him play with him. So uh, he just said on the way home, he said, "I can safely say that I never want to go there again before I die." <laughs> so that was that. <laughs> And then we went home. Why it. would he ever give you that information? In case it was like a, a secret birthday present. Yeah. Oh God, what if they get me a trip to here? Or if he's in a coma and you go, I tell you what, I'll try to bring him out of it. <laughs> that fat <laughs> couple. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. By his bedside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but Suzanne said she now realises why I am the way I am. After yeah. spending like a week with them. Well, they, said, they told, they told her that they dropped you on your head as a kid or? No, just, just like, you know, the way they act and that. Right, yeah. Um, I no, think... they were saying things like, Suzanne, so, uh, why is the moon out at night in the seven of the day? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, God, was, there's it... three of them. <laughs> Suzanne, can you tie my shoelaces again? <laughs> it was the bit when my dad said, don't waste money on a coffin for him, just put him in a bin bag. <laughs> <laughs> Your father said that. About himself. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a great idea. I'm glad you mentioned that, because that is great. That gives me an idea. Thank you very much. Put a smile upon your Coldplay, God put a smile upon your face on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Reading the paper yesterday, Rick, they uh, were talking about the fact that Blair has been, I think, he's been in Greece um, discussing EU matters. Oh, yeah. And they used uh, the old Trojan horse analogy yeah. to say, you know, here's a particular policy and it seems like they're trying to sneak, sneak in, some, in sneak in some kind yeah. of dubious Spies ideas. Disguised as something else. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, it's always struck me, ever since I was first introduced to the Trojan horse theory, I never understood how it had come about. Do you know what I mean? So, I, 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 Carl has got a frown on him. Like, a thing I haven't seen. Yeah. Uh, uh, Carl, not Tony Blair is the Prime Minister. <laughs> 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 you know what the Trojan Horse was? Go on. Um, Have you come across this before? Have you heard of it before? Um, wasn't that Ascot or anything? <laughs> 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 Go on. Well, the Trojan Horse, what happened was, uh, it's, it's a famous kind of Greek story. Um, about the fact that, uh, the Greeks- In olden laid, times, Carl, yeah, olden times olden is, times, you know, specifically. The 70s, yeah. The Greeks laid siege to Troy for six years. Um, Waiting. Basically, things had got out of hand. Uh, I think the Trojans had done something with Helen, and someone else was annoyed. Anyway, it all got very complicated. It got out of hand, and the, uh, you know, Greeks, the Helen, the one with the mashed up face, because they used to use it to launch ships. Mm. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the Greeks laid siege to Troy, for six years, right, and they weren't getting anywhere. They were outside the gates, they were saying, let us in, they weren't, they were blah, blah, blah. So what they did was, they all disappeared, they all- They, well, all they wanted to get in and kill everyone. Yeah, exactly. That's why they wouldn't be letting in. But they couldn't get inside the city walls. So what they did was, they left as a gift for the Tro Trojans, they left an enormous wooden horse, okay, uh, as a gift, and then they all buggered off. Like 40 foot high, 50 foot long, I mean a big, you know. Big wooden horse. An arc of and a horse. And the Trojans wheeled it into the city. So that's nice. Thought, what a lovely gift. Yeah. And, lo and behold, who was hiding inside, but an entire Greek army, they the left Lord. out, killed everyone in their sleep. Yeah. Alright, and that's where that famous idea of a Trojan horse has come from, you know, sneaking something in, disguised as something else. Uh, Alright. Yeah. Okay? So if he ever... Yeah. He doesn't really understand, does he? No, but, to be honest, nor do I. Well, I, this is the problem I've always had with this. Because I, I, I don't understand who comes up with the idea. I mean, but I, I can't think that was the best idea. Well, no, no. There must be another ways. If they come up with that, how long did it take them to go? When they said, one, one, one before they said, oh, I'm not, oh, whoa, 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 um, can I have a word? Go on. General, right, yeah. um, I've got an idea. Yeah. Build a big horse, right, hide inside it, and then, then, ah, I know what you're thinking, they won't let us in even in the horse. Yeah. Leave it as a gift. Brilliant. Right. Who are you? That's the best idea. Are you the guy that came up with, <laughs> why don't we get a giant bra and twing <laughs> everyone over the yeah, walls? Yeah. Let's get a, let's get a hundred foot ruler, and you know like at school you used to like flick the teacher's yeah. ass with like a, right, I could flick you over one at a time. Right. On this giant Thanks ruler. Thanks for your idea. <laughs> it's on the table. Yeah. We've got a couple of suggestions on the way. What about a million elastic bands tied together, 
Yeah, and you all hold it down, and then I just let you go. Right. And you all ping over, and then you kill him in their sleep. You're the best tactician we've got, are you? Uh, what- the other thing is, right, these people open the- for some reason open the door. Well, I don't understand. Firstly, there's suddenly- the- the army that's laid siege to them for six years has disappeared, in yeah. their place, an enormous gift of a giant wooden horse. Oh, they probably don't want to kill us now, but the, what they've done is they've built us a Yeah, they've a built horse. us a great gift. Presumably there was a giant kind of card or something, yeah. you know. Um, something for you, you know, sorry about the laying siege and everything, forgive you. Yeah. Here's an enormous gift, is it? <laughs> Here's an enormous Trojan horse. We know it's what you've always wanted. We're, we're not inside it. <laughs> exactly. Why did they write that? Yeah. That's suspicious. But it's, well, I wheel mean, it, wheel it in anyway. But in terms of it as an idea initially, I mean, we're gonna give them a gift, well what should we do? We could bake an enormous quiche, <laughs> yeah. be inside that, we could have an enormous soap on a rope as a It's the fact that it's an enormous horse, yeah. an enormous wooden horse as a gift anyway. I don't know if this was a, a popular gift at the time. But it's also the stupidity of the Trojans saying, brilliant, I've always wanted an enormous wooden horse, well what are we gonna do with it? <laughs> what yeah, are we gonna we'll put it? Anyway, leave it. Just wheel but, it in anyway, leave it in let's go to sleep, let's worry about it tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. That's uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's this idea of going, someone going, right, is this definitely the best idea? And they go, yeah, and they look to the carpenter. Yeah. And he goes, well it's gonna take a while. Yeah, we've got to get wood. We've got to get other with it. Well, you haven't put a door in. Yeah. How are we gonna get oh, out there? That doesn't look like a horse. It is. This is the worst horse I've ever seen. Why, it looks like a cow. Wow, well, yeah, the udder's where we hide. <laughs> this is a horse. It's got no tail. It's, yeah, about that's the rope that you climb up. But I don't know if it's one of those things where, again, because we kind of learn these things at school, that somewhere along the line, the truth of it has disappeared, and we are... Well, I imagine it's lost a bit in translation. Yeah. Because, uh... In Eohippus in Greek means a giant tank. <laughs> right, so that yeah. actually that was a Sherman. Yeah. And it burst through and it shot them all. Yeah. But yeah. of course, down the years, they've tried. Look at Carl's face. Look at Carl's face. If everyone on webcam, Carl, just keep that face and look up to the camera. Right? Just, right, get a, get a look at that now. Play a record, Carl. Educating Carl, we should bring that back. We should bring that back. Yeah. What do you want to learn about next week? We've told you about the Trojan horse. Uh. Know anything about any freaks? Oh, that was big to know. Placebo. This picture on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Right. So you've been educated there, haven't you? The yeah, Trojan so, horse. Yeah, yeah. The Trojan horse. And that's of course where the phrase "Be where Greeks bearing gifts" comes from. <laughs> Silence again. Yeah. You haven't heard that one? Go on. What, what's that again? Beware Greeks bearing gifts. Right. What do you think that means? Uh, I don't know. I mean, what, is that, is that used worldwide or what? Will he say that in Greece as well or? Because uh. <laughs> imagine Christmas Day is rubbish. <laughs> 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 no, it doesn't actually mean we were of Greeks wearing gifts. It's more to do with like, maybe it's too good to be true, or you know, it's just the opposite to don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Well, for probably where it came from was Justin from Southend emailed in. He just said, uh, for the Trojans not to have spotted that it was a trick, they must have been the biggest bunch of moronic mm, yeah ever to have walked the earth. Does Carl have any Trojan in him by any chance? <laughs> Cheeky, isn't it? Eh? What? Never mind. <laughs> well, I think that probably proves it. <laughs> I thought of another one I like as well. I was saying, you might as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. I've never heard- I don't think I've heard that. I have heard it, but I don't think I've ever used it in common parlance. Well, it's like, if you're gonna do something, you know, you might as well go the whole hog, depending on the- the outcome. Be because it's based on reality, that's why I like it, because obviously the poor people used to poach, and if they were caught stealing, you know, a sheep or anything, they would be hung. So, if you're gonna get caught, don't steal a lamb. You know, at least feed your family for a few weeks. Right, sure. Kill a sheep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually hung. But killing a sheep. Oh, your dad would be in trouble. Down in oh. Wales, stealing stuff from that, uh, oh. from that well, phone box. Well, he, he has a couple of sayings, right? Your father? Uh, mm. Yeah, I've, I've never asked him what they mean. Um <laughs> Why would you? Ask what, Suzanne. One is, uh don't try and teach your granny to suck eggs. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? That means, uh, it's patronising. To, to, of course, of course I know that. You're, you're talking to someone who knows more about this subject than you. But how did that happen then? How did that saying come about? Well, it's not. It, it's, it's a totally made up thing. It's like, your granny sucks eggs, doesn't she? Cause she's, she's older than you and it's probably a lost art or something. Alright. Uh, and the other one, um... Sucks eggs? 
Sucks yeah. eggs, yeah. Sucks eggs, sorry, I thought you said something else. Uh, yeah. don't nudge your granny when she's shaving. What? what? Don't, sorry. Don't nudge your granny while she's shaving. Don't nudge your- sorry, sorry. Well that's slower, I can't say. Don't, don't, don't nudge, nudge your, your granny when she's having a shave. Well what is that in context? Because I can't work out what the analogy is there because that might just be you, you when you were little you used to run up to your granny while she was shaving or something. But what, uh, why is your granny shaving? Well no, what, what context is that still in? Tell me the last time your dad ever said that and I'll try and work out what it means. Uh I can't remember. I can't- I, I, I don't are know. Are you sure things aren't specific to your granny? <laughs> yeah, I was just saying, where are you nudging your granny? She was going, yeah. get lost, Carl. She was shaving off her moustache. Or oh. giving herself a Brazilian. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> That's grotesque. <laughs> <laughs> suck yeah. an egg, suck an egg, suck an egg. Suck an egg. Suck an egg. Suck an egg. Oh, oh yeah. god. That's made, that's <laughs> yeah, made that's really it worse. worse. Carl's granny <laughs> sucking eggs whilst I- <laughs> That <laughs> is my- Giving herself a Brazilian. <laughs> We've no idea. I don't know what that means. Don't nudge your granny while she's shaving. <laughs> what, yeah. Parmesan? I, I don't know. Maybe someone knows. You might be right, maybe. Well, it's email in. Tell yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Rockbusters, Carl. Go yeah. on, should we get the ball rolling? Let me just find the, uh, yeah, the yeah, gifts yeah, here, yeah, the yeah. little treats. We've got the album from The Coral. You know what I think about that. We've got uh, Comfort in Sound Feeder. Well, it's just a novelty record, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so. we've got, uh, on DVD, more great comedy moments, favourite clips from the best of contemporary BBC comedy. We've got Partridge on the front there, we've got uh, one of the guys from Red Dwarf, and, uh, Brilliant. one of those <laughs> good stuff on there. Smash Hits, The Reunion, more great 80s tunes, Kajagoogoo's on there, uh, plus some stuff- Too Shy? <laughs> it is Too yeah, Shy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Actually, let me see if you can guess which one's from Tiffany. Uh, well, yeah, I know it, the only one. I think uh, we're alone now. Yeah, I think we're alone, yeah. Um, Melonkim? Uh, respectable. Mm hmm. Human League. That'd be, oh wow, what would they, would they have got, don't you want me? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Ta Lies take on me? Yep. Yeah. Well done. Um, Madness. Baggy Trousers. Of course. Uh, Kim Wilde. Kids in America. Yeah, so there's just all those treats. If you if, yeah. you, if you like a song from an 80s band, it's probably on there. Yeah, okay. Plus we've also got on uh, VHS, uh, Graham Norton, some kind of best of compilation from his TV show. So, uh, there are the, um... Hold on, is it, is it the one where he talks to sort of female gay icons and, and looks at the internet? Because <laughs> that's my favourite one. Um, right, there you go, let's do Rockbusters. Right, email then. only, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk if you know the answer. Right, first one. A uh, bit of a cryptic clue, if you haven't heard it before. Well, not cryptic, we're gone. <laughs> um, what, what is Carl thinking? If you go into France by boat, I'd get your fags on there, because it's a lot cheaper. Imagine <laughs> 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 Bob Holness. <laughs> sorry, we're out of time. I, uh, it's, sorry, your minute's up, you've won nothing. I was reading that question out. <laughs> sorry, right. so what's the- Well, let's do it again, and I want it to be exactly the same, word perfect. I bet you it will change- uh, all over the place. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's lost it. Go to France, right. buy yourself a boat. Yeah. Okay. okay, okay. Fingers on the buzzers. Um, you've only got ten seconds to win the uh, the gold run. Okay, first up. Here, I'll tell you what. No, seriously, if you're thinking of going to France, well, don't. You know, because go on the ferry, get the fags there, because it's cheaper. Go on. All right. So that one again. Uh, if you want to buy some fags, you're going over to France on the boat. Get them on there, because you'll save a few quid. B F. B F. Right. B F. Okay. Okay. Right, the second one. Um, mm. this little, uh, <laughs> foreign cafe is growing its own steak. <laughs> <laughs> this little foreign cafe is growing its own steak. Yeah. yeah. This little foreign cafe is growing its own steak. Go on. D. Alright. Right. Okay. And the last one, uh, uh <laughs> Is uh, that part of it? Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. The Jamaican fella might have screamed oh. this on the uh, right. on the Titanic. What? <laughs> the Jamaican fella might have scre might have screamed this on the Titanic. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, what's it start with? It's uh, C D. That one. <laughs> the Jamaican fella might have screamed this on the Titanic. Ricky Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Please don't phone in. Um, if you can get those, we just don't want to talk to you. <laughs> 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 Better Nelly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a yeah, summer, yeah, summer favourite. Nelly, ride with me. Uh, that's featuring City Spud. I don't know if you're <laughs> aware of that, but uh, there we are. Good, nice summer tune. Carl, tell uh, Steve what you just told me when Steve was in the toilet then. 
Right. You know, I'd, I'd just been away with my mum and dad and that. Mm. And, uh, one of the things I always liked doing is having a good chat with my dad about stuff he got up to when he was a kid and that. Yeah. Right, because he got up to loads of stuff. And every time I see him, he tells me something and I thought, well, it's like, why are you just telling me that now? It's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Right? So, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I mean, to me, he's kind of like Ronnie Biggs or someone. He's just the most extraordinary kind of well, this, this character. Well, this happened, right? I, I can't remember. There was a delay yesterday. There was problems on the Paddington line. Yeah. And he was saying, oh, trains aren't what they used to be. Sure. Um, he said, you know, he said I was looking- They used to be horses, didn't they? Well, he, he was like, he was looking in the booklet and it was saying, oh, you can have your bags collected if you want, but it costs you a fiver. Yeah. So that's outrageous. Sure, of course. Right, so he said, that's the problem with this country. Uh, we've got good with computers and that, but when it comes to, like, getting service, it's gone out the window. Yeah. Right? So he said, when I worked on the trains, you know, and he was going on like this, that and the other, so I said, oh, right, I didn't know you worked on the trains. He said, uh, yeah, yeah, when I was 18, right, it was his job to get the coal, right, and chuck it in the engine. Uh-huh. Right? And one day he's in, uh, he's in Grand Central Station in Manchester, which is now the GMEX Centre. Right. Right? And that was, like, the main station. And, uh, he was in there. The fella who should have been sort of driving the train, yeah. right? He said, oh, I'm just nipping to the pub. Sure. So you just stay here, keep the engine topped up and stuff. Yeah. So he's like, yeah, right, For right, a quick right. getaway. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, uh, so the fella goes in, in the pub and my dad's in there, you know, putting the coal on. He, he did his bacon and eggs on a little, uh, a little shovel. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And, uh, anyway, fella comes up. He says, right, can you move the, uh, train forward now? Oh, blimey. So he was like, oh. So he didn't want to say, oh, the fella's in the pub, because he'd know he'd say, well, what's he doing in the pub? He should be working, right? So he said, yeah, 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 no problem, I'll sort it out. Right, so he, uh, puts it, puts it into gear or whatever you do on, on them trains, Sure, right? puts it into first, yeah. Starts going forward. Now, people who don't know about trains, something that I learnt is if you're carrying a load of coal or whatever on the back of it, they don't have brakes on each carriage, right? It's only the engine that has brakes on it. Uh -huh. So when you pull the brakes on the on the engine, the whole weight of what it's pulling is pushing you forward. Sure. Right? Yeah. So he doesn't realise this though, because he's he's just used to cooking bacon and eggs and chucking coal in Of course, yeah. So you've got to slam the brakes on sooner than you would normally. Yeah. Well, you have to anticipate it, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he, he didn't know that, Could so he, yeah. he's pulling in, he's thinking, right, well, I'll, put the brakes, I'll put the brakes on now. Yeah. Right? Puts the brakes on, the train just keeps going, he's going, oh god, it's not stopping. Sure. It ploughs right through the signal box. <laughs> Right, uh, loads the of damage. The pulling the single don't know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> loads of loads of damage done. Apparently, it, it if it was today's money, yeah, it'd be about three to four <laughs> million pounds worth of damage. It it shut the station off God. for four weeks, um, but he didn't lose his job. The fella had lost his job. The f one who was in the in the pub. Yeah, um, he said the funny thing was, he said like four million pounds worth of damage. Um, he did his ankle, uh, his uh, his wrist in. He had three weeks off sick and got paid. <laughs> so it's brilliant. So I love your family. It's extraordinary. The Pilkinson gene. Weird, isn't it? I'd like to see a documentary following you and your family. You'd have to get the family involved. No, the sort of stuff my dad goes on about. They'd never put it on Sally. <laughs> 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 Blair, out of time on XFM 104.9. We ought to give those Rockbusters clues again. <laughs> yeah, go on. Uh, We've had very one. few contributions so far, Carl. I think you've really started. Uh, this might be it. I've told you, you're on thin ice. If this, if this goes wrong, if it's rubbish, and if everyone doesn't get them all, that's the end of Rockbusters. Right, well, uh, the first one again, right? Yeah. If you go out of France, right, by boat, <laughs> you might as well get your fags whilst you're on that, because you'll save a few quid. Right? <laughs> Different every time. B, like B F B F is the initials of the artist that that little cryptic clue makes up. The second one, little foreign cafe it's growing its own steak. Right? That's D. <laughs> little foreign cafe it's growing its own steak. D. Yeah. And the last one, uh, if there was a Jamaican fella on the Titanic when it went down, he'd, he'd probably scream this. <laughs> C D. Right? So email in. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Yeah, right. they're not right. flooding in, but yeah. Well, we'll see how we do.
Carl, have we still got monkey news? We've got monkey news coming up. Now, you must be disappointed because you didn't make it to the monkey sanctuary, but you still managed to scrape together monkey news on your holiday. Yeah. That's so impressive. I've found some of that. We've got... How, so how do you, how do you get so many breaks and holidays? Because you went, you went away with Suzanne's <coughs> parents, you've just been away with your parents, that's a couple of weeks, ten days, so that's probably about three weeks in all. You had that, you went to Manchester, you were, you had that day off because your trousers were wet. I mean, and you've, you know, I, mean, I suppose because you, you've only got one job and, you know, I've got a lot more, this is just one of my jobs. But I mean, don't you ever count your blessings, go, God, thank God I just, I can have time off, I, I don't mm -hmm. work too hard, you know, I'm not stressed too no, much. No, no, no. It's uh, just all to do with when you do work, do a lot. So I've, I get a lot done. Yeah. What do you mean? I'm always doing stuff. I mean, even though when I was in Cornwall, right, I'm sat there on the grass. Mm. Um, oh, I'd love to just sit on the grass. Oh, yeah, just, yeah, you're too busy. I know, yeah, well, you know. Me uh, dad and Susanna playing crib, right? I'd sort of fallen out with him at <laughs> Your dad and Susanna playing crib. Why did you fall, fallen out Because you do live him? in the 1940s. Yeah, why had you fallen out? Because with crib, have you ever played crib? Yeah. Right, you've got to be pretty good at maths. Sure. Well, you've got to make your cards add up to 15 and all Well, yeah, <laughs> I was just gonna, I was just gonna correct you on you've got to be good at maths. Yeah. What, what, algebra, quantum physics, what? No, just, just adding up. Adding up to 15. Uh, Brilliant. I mean, I mean, you can almost do it on your fingers. <laughs> <I> mean, <that's> <laughs> <laughs> you could in Cornwall. Yeah. <laughs> But my dad's uh, really good at maths, and like he said, how many have you got? And, and he always counts, isn't it? It's like 15 and 2, 15 and 4, 15 and 6, 3, three for your at, one and all that, do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. He adds it up really one quick. One for his knob. Right, so I was like, right, hang on a minute. And he goes, no, no what do you mean, hang on? I don't know, what, what have you got? <laughs> he goes, oh, forget it. I said, this isn't, this isn't fun if you're gonna start getting all arty with me. <laughs> sure. So, forget it! Yeah. I love it! But he's only, I'm sure he's, I don't know him, but I'm sure he's just winding you up. It, like, his, his victory is you going, ah, oh, forget it, I'm not playing. Well, anyway, right, so it doesn't matter, and I think I'll go off and do some prep, right, yes. do some research for Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Found one of Suzanne's magazines, right, uh, flicking through, because there's always interesting stuff in there. There was something about, uh, about swingers. Right. And I was like, what's all that about? Yeah. And it had an interview with some people talking about, you know, how they, uh, sleep about a bit. Yeah. And I thought... If my wife looked like that, I probably would. Because <laughs> there was a few pictures of them and they were all pretty ugly. Yes. I thought, right. So I took that in, soaked that up, thought, there you go. Uh, carried on reading. There was a bit in there about how women still have crushes, right? Yes. Uh, and the woman was going on about uh, how she's 38, right? But she still fancies Chris Martin from Coldplay. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, even though it'll never happen, she's still got that little bit in her head yeah. that thinks one day she'll leave Gwyneth, right, and end up with, with, with her, right? Right. Anyway, so I'm flicking, I'm thinking this is a bit boring, but I'm flicking through it all, and, uh... Is this, says, a, is this a rock versus clue? No, no. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I read, I read further on, read th further on, right, and, uh, she said, you know, we, we, I like to go out with my mates, and we come up with lists in pubs, of people who like, oh, you know, they, they'd be nice to go out with. She also came up with a, a list of unlikely lost objects, I think she called them. Yeah. Guess who was in that list? Ricky Gervais. Think again. Carl Pilkington. Right. Next one. Johnny Vegas. Said, lanky co-writer. <laughs> Rubbish. Lanky co-writer. What do you mean, lanky co-writer? Well, don't need to say anymore. <laughs> he said... <laughs> Hang on, wait a minute. Let's not talk about... I, I don't want you laughing at my expense. I'm an unlikely lust object. <laughs> yeah, but... But you, you... Yeah, what was it called? The, the list? Uh, the... The unlikely lust object. Yes. List. You were in there, right? Who else was? Well, you weren't in there. Richard, were... Richard Madeley. Fine. Yeah. He's a good-looking guy. Alistair Campbell. Brilliant. Yeah. Another handsome dude. Hmm. What are you talking about? How can you, how are you, what, you, you think I'm ashamed or embarrassed about that? I'm proud of it. What magazine was it? I need to buy a couple of <laughs> yeah, copies. Yeah, it was. <laughs> need to get did a t-shirt made. Did, 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 yeah, and did she leave her number? Yeah. <laughs> what, so what magazine was it? Just, I'm oh, just out of interest. Just, I think it's know. called Red. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. But now you've dissed those people that have put themselves in their swingers because you've said they're ugly. So now we know what magazine it is. People are going to look at that, people are going to look at that poor woman and they're going to know you think She's a hog. No, but I, I think they even know. 
Was there a picture <laughs> of the woman who know. was drawn up the list of unlikely lust objects? Mm -hmm. What was she like? I wouldn't waste my time. Uh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, mate. I know you're on my side. Thrills on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant, object of unlikely lust object. Steve Merchant. I'd like to have that now, prefixing my name everywhere I'm written about. I know, yeah. Did he make the freak list? Woo! Which is, in a, which is a different magazine, isn't it? And I'm joking, of course, Carl Pilkington. A man of sort of quiet, quiet dignity and, <laughs> and in a way, he's got his own sort of inner beauty, hasn't he, Carl? Not really. Don't you think? Well, I'll tell you why I don't think it is, because the woman that wrote the piece, saying that I was an unlikely lust object, has just emailed in. And Carl, you've offended her quite considerably. What did he say? Why? I wouldn't waste my time, is what you said. She's re repeated oh, that. Yeah. I wouldn't waste my time, the flaming cheek. Although it's a horrible picture, I am, of course, in real life, a vision of loveliness. I'm not 38, I'm 25. I don't think Stephen's that unlikely lust object. A sense of humour is important, and he's welcome to my phone number if he wants it. Is a sense of humour is important, that's a down Is she a swinger? Uh, stop it! Don't have a go at the I'm woman, I'm, I'm, I'm messing about, she knows I'm messing about. Well, how are you messing about? You're I've told you this, though. I've told you that anyone could be listening, haven't I? I've told you that before, things you say. And, and you, but we encourage him. We say, what does she look like? We, but it's meant to be rhetorical. That was a joke. That was Stephen joke, what does she look like? I.e. him joking, like, oh. I I'll call her up, because I'm on a list, and then you have to say that. I mean, uh, that's what I mean. So chances are, if, you know, if she likes Stephen, she hasn't seen him, she listens to the radio. So, mm. the likelihood is that, you know, she was listening to this show. Yeah. So, think. Will I drop the thing I was going to do about Lisa Riley? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, She's not I'm, listening. Some She's, people deserve it. She's still at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> what from Tuesday? <laughs> <laughs> There's an all, all you can eat place going out of business as we yeah. speak. Oh, bloody hell, <laughs> she's back. You killed me. I gotta do Bambino. Please leave now. Please leave. <laughs> so, uh. No, but she knows I was only messing this Yeah. Uh, this Everyone knows thing. you're only messing. We're all only messing. I hope we don't offend anyone of, uh, you know, any kind out there. We're only joking, aren't we, Carl? Yeah. Say something nice about her. What can you remember of the picture that you could that you could say was good? Maybe she was wearing some nice things. Wasn't anything to be honest. I'll have another look and have a look. I think she had a nice shirt, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Forthcoming single from British Sea Power. That's called Carry On. I love it. It's great. It's fantastic. On yes. XFM 104.9. What do you make, Carl, of these people? I was reading a paper today. They've been queuing up for 12 hours last night for the new Harry Potter book. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I knew you'd God, like it that. really annoys me. Everything, uh, uh, oh, God, it really annoys me. But who has to, I mean, I know it's just a kind of willful sort of stubbornness. I see, I, I, I see adults yeah. reading it, you know. I, I, uh. Well, I was up in Hampstead last night, and uh, there's a, a Waterstones branch of that, and there were a couple of people outside queuing. Waiting for it to open. Um, what do they look like? Well, I mean, things what, that they're, they're like the ones that come out of a forbidden, pl forbidden planet on a yeah, Thursday. Yeah, I mean, what do you yeah. expect? There was one guy. I mean, I don't mean to disrespect him, but he was a big bloater, shorts, <laughs> wearing shorts. I don't want to see his big fleshy legs. He looked like John O'Coleman, if I'm not. Well, there's nothing wrong with John O'Coleman. He wore a knapsack. Are. They always seem to have knapsacks for some reason. Well, they got old. They got old papers in there, haven't they? <laughs> exactly. Got a Probably. nine years supply of well, There was about four of them. There was a couple of women, a couple of guys. All looked basically the same. They were interchangeable, and. um we get an they email were there from him in a minute. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> get an email. Yeah. I am the fat bloater with fleshy legs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I recognise your description. I like to read these books whilst listening to XFM <laughs> of a Saturday. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was sort of watching them from where I was, and I and they were there, must have been there for about an hour and a half. They were obviously strangers. They'd all they, their common interest was Harry Potter. They were reading. They were sort of chatting to each other for about an hour and a half. So as I'm leaving, I wander past them. An hour and a half in to them having met each other, the conversation is, uh, all I heard was, uh, <laughs> well, of course, apparently she cried when she finished the last one. And I uh, thought, they what, they, they got, they've not moved on, the conversation had not moved on. No, they might have been talking about Dawn French, you know, her chocolate orange, <laughs> yeah, by then. Yeah. I know she <laughs> cried when she finished the last one yeah. once. Yeah. But, but um, um, I yeah. got no time for them. I, just, no, you I. know, pop into Walrus now. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, get I'm it tomorrow and read it then. You're, not, what, you're gonna get home at half one and start reading it. <laughs> exactly. Brilliant. So you can put it on the internet. Oh, God. Your opinions. Oh, it annoys me. It is extraordinary. Uh, the whole kind of, the whole kind of Harry Potter phenomenon is passing me by. I, I know, I know, well, people, good, good luck to her, you know. But you meet adults who are, un you say, what are you doing? Go, I'm just rereading Harry Potter. What, you couldn't follow it the first I know. time? Yeah. I mean, she, I mean, it's not her fault, you know, she no, made three hundred million pounds by writing a few books for I'm her sure kids. Well, good, well yeah. done, but, um, I'm sure they're, I mean, I'm not sure they're very good, but, uh, I'm, I haven't read them, I'm, I'm sure they're not, but no, I don't know. Well, I've, don't I've, have no, 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 I'm joking, well, I, but I've no idea. a book about a little wizard. <laughs> <laughs> With glasses. Yeah, and make millions. <laughs> you, you so easy. If you think it's so easy, you do it. You, you like him, because you look a bit like him. Wow. Well. Wow. Well. You know. I wonder if he's on a- uh, that wish list, that that woman who emailed in, why was she making a list of unlikely- Can we leave this now? No, but I mean, what was it, what was context was it? It was like, here's my top ten weird looking fellas that I no. do. What was it? <laughs> no, no, but what, what was the, what was, she was talking about what? What was, she'd started talking about, what, body waxing and went, and by the way, while I'm here, here's ten blokes that I would if I had to, and they're a bit weird, you'll be surprised. What was the context? I forgot. <laughs> He's scared to say anything now! He's scared to say anything! Oh, bless I, him. I just was looking at a picture because I was attracted to it because she was good looking and that didn't read on. <laughs> that alright? <laughs> well done. That's uh, got you out of that little mess. Yeah, yeah. Well but, uh, Harry Potter. Yeah. yeah. Can't be honest with it. Have you read them? Uh, no, because the, the first time it came out, uh, I was a bit confused, wasn't I? Because I thought it was about Of course a you were. <laughs> yeah. You of course what? What? This is a what? It's a book. No, I I, I got confused with the little uh, the little rabbit. I thought it was her, didn't I? You talked about it when Beatrix it Beatrix first... Potter. Yeah, I got I got mixed up with that, so I sort of missed out on the first one anyway. <laughs> you were just running around late. confused. So it was like, like <laughs> yeah. too, it was sort of too late to get into it. I think after. Yeah, it's too late now. Yeah. Um, it's impossible. So no, with Shakespeare, if you weren't around, you know, the day, <laughs> the day he wrote the first ones, there's no point in going back. But it's all the fuss that she's getting as well, like, um... Well, I think it's because she's a British industry now, isn't she? I mean, it must have made, what, billions? Well, it's the perfect success story. She writes a, a story for her children and it becomes a worldwide phenomenon. You know, it's not cynical, it's just, it's just a great story. Didn't your dad ever pop anything down in writing? <laughs> yes. I'll tell you what, my mum wanted to do it. Yeah. Um... There's been loads of things, little inventions she's come up with and that, but she's been too busy doing other stuff. But she used to come up with stories for me as a kid that I'm sure if they came out they'd be a success. Yeah. Go on. Do you remember any of them? Uh, there was one about a little red car. I can't remember how that ended. Uh, but the one that was really good was about a, uh, a kid who gets, uh, a dog, right? Um, but it's quite an old dog. This is gonna be an episode of the Walt ones, yeah. isn't it? And then right. go on. Go on. And, uh, he's playing with the dog and that, but it starts getting a bit old. It's about 15 or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, he goes, oh, it's rubbish, this dog. <laughs> <laughs> so... I would love that book for kids! <laughs> I would love that one! Tommy went, oh, mummy, my dad's- oh, no, no. Kill it then. <laughs> Kill it then. Shall I? Like, yeah, just throw it in the lake. I'll get you another one. <laughs> Do you want a Nintendo? Yeah. Kick the rabbit to death then. <laughs> Or no <laughs> food for you. Oh, for Brilliant. No, 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 only about 25 minutes to go. We've got monkey news, we've got rock busters. Have we got a cheeky figure of the week this week? Could cram it in, see how we do. <laughs> do we want to, do we want to hear the end of Carl's story? Yeah, what's I this, really the kid, the little, little Timmy and his, his, his 15 year old dog Lucky got a bit bored with it. Right, so he said, oh mum, you know, this dog's rubbish and that, I'm sick of it. Yeah. So she goes... How old mm. were you when your mum was telling you this story? <laughs> uh, I don't know, about four. Okay. It wasn't last week on holiday. Uh, <laughs> no, right. Right. So, uh... So she goes, oh, alright then, we'll get you another one. Yeah. She goes, brilliant. What'd you do with the old one? Just kept it, but didn't sort of play with it. Really. <laughs> 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 Just ostracised it. <laughs> it uh, yeah. Some of its own free will, or curled up and died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. Yeah. So, um, what'd so you, you get him? What sort of dog? I think it was a little, uh, little baby, like Labrador. Puppy. Mm -hmm. Little puppy. Yeah. Yeah, Labrador. Right. Good one. Good choice. Good choice for a second dog. So, um, yeah. 
So I'm loving this story. <laughs> so I am story. actually loving this story. So Where does he live? I, th I don't know, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. It was near a, near a lake. Oh, we'll be- That's <laughs> where they were getting rid of all the- Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. We're, we're getting- that'll make sense in a minute, right? So, uh, so, he's got the little dog, he's playing around with it. Mm. He's playing with its belly and stuff. He's thinking this is brilliant, best dog I've ever had, right? And the other dog sat in the corner looking all fed up, yeah. right? So, uh- I like this story. So he says- he says to his mum, right, I'm taking, uh, little puppy down the park. Yeah. And she goes, well, take the old one with you. And he goes, oh, do we have to? It's a moral, I bet the old one saves him. So, yeah. so, he goes, oh, do I have to? She goes, yeah, it still needs a walk and that. It's crapping all over the house. Right. Yeah. So, takes it down the park, right, and, uh, it's playing around and he's playing near the, near the lake. Right. Is the puppy near the lake, Carl? Because this is what's worrying me. Yeah. Puppy's near the lake, yeah. right. That jumps in. Yeah. The kid goes, oh god, he jumps in, remembers he can't swim. Yeah, idiot. Right? This kid is based on you, isn't it? <laughs> Almost certainly. Flapping about. Water's going everywhere, he's going to can't- oh god, and he, he, like, he wants the puppy to help him, but the puppy's just like drowning as well. Yeah. yeah. The old dog comes up, drags them both out. He goes, I can't believe it. You know, I said I was fed up with you. Yeah. You saved me life. Yeah. He gets home, and he says to his mum- Kill the little one. The puppy. Kill the puppy. Yeah. So, it's good little- good What little does he story. say when he gets home? He said, I don't need the puppy now, I've got- I'm Brilliant! <laughs> Brilliant! <laughs> Genius! <laughs> Good, aren't it? Yeah, so the moral of that story is well, just follow your whims. They just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> If you get bored, get bored and get, <laughs> yeah. get another puppy. Get another dog. If you get bored with the old one again, just do it again. I mean, yeah. just eventually, you know, get something yeah, that you like a little- Yeah, 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 yeah. That's brilliant. That is a brilliant story, though. <laughs> yeah. Right, so that's that. Rockbusters. Yes. I don't want you to have monkey news right now, because oh, we've just okay. had a little story there. Sure. <laughs> you don't want it, yeah. Don't want to go too far. Ooh. Yeah, go on. So we'll get Rockbusters out of the way, have we got a winner? Uh, yeah, well, come on then. Mm, See, it really. worries me that there's, we've had uh, very few entries. I think that even your mental fans aren't getting these, which is really worrying. They must be terrible clues this week. Alright, well, uh... Has anyone got on right, Steve? I think there's just one guy, yeah, who I suspect has won in the past. Well, that, you so what? Right, the first one, uh, if you go out of France by boat, uh, you might as well buy your fags when you're on that, cause you'll get them a lot cheaper. Brilliant. Right? Yeah. Um, BF. Yeah. Buy it ferry, right? That's like- What? <laughs> buy on ferry. What? Buy on- f buy What's on buy on ferry? Who's- what, what's that? Is that a band? What? What is it? I don't no, know what it is. Brian Ferry. Brian Ferry? What's that got to do with buying on a ferry though? Just cause it's quite close to it. Buy on- <laughs> Buy on ferry. Buy what? Buy on, buy on ferry. Sorry, uh, uh, what? That's the what's first your first one. language? Uh, the second one. That's rubbish. That doesn't count. No, buy, on, buy on ferry. <laughs> buy on ferry. Buy on ferry. Um, <laughs> there's this little foreign cafe. Um, yeah. it's growing its own steak. Um, that's that's Delamitri. Uh, the third one. What? what? <laughs> Sorry, what? What? What is that? What is that? Delimitri. Delhi is a yeah. little foreign cafe. Yeah. And a meat tree and that. <laughs> a meat tree? <laughs> a meat tree? <laughs> what were the initials for that? Just, just D for that. Just D for that? Yeah. So not D-A? So that... you didn't even give them a chance to get the group? Well, they, they got it. Well, no. No, 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 they, they, they didn't. Right, it's the end. <laughs> right, go on, right. Go on. Delhi meat tree? Delhi meat tree. <laughs> One word, D. <laughs> D. Or any letter. They're growing M. their own M. Meat. M's in it. Go on. Okay, so Bayern, Bayern, I love Bayern Ferry. And <laughs> Oxy, Oxy Music, Oxy Music was brilliant. <laughs> can I just- I love Oxy Music. Go on. Can I just point out, Rick, that, um, we Dave, had, David Bowie? Delhi Meat Tree. Yeah. I don't see why, necessarily, uh, Aiden, who, uh, emailed in, why he doesn't get to win, because he emailed in Dire Stakes. <laughs> Seems to be just as valid, as far as I can tell, but <laughs> yeah. Delhi Mitri right. it is. Um, and the last one, uh, if there was a Jamaican fella on the Titanic- I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, with a little bit of fear. Jamaican fella, if he was on the Titanic, he probably would have screamed this. Yeah. Uh, that's Christ de Berg. Stunning. So who's, who's the winner? I'm not gonna give it to anyone. 
I just what's don't- So think... what- what's the Jamaican bit got to do with it? It's the D. It's Christ de Berg. <laughs> say it again? No, I think they, they've worked it out now. What's- what <laughs> do I say it again? Christ de Berg. And who's that? What? Who's that? Who's what? Who's Christ de Berg? Chris de Berg. Who's the winner, Steve? I'm, do you know what? I'm gonna give it to so, Aiden. Because he just- he just treated you with nothing but contempt. Steve Martin, uh, uh, emailed in again. He got the first two and then the last one he just emailed, I neither know nor care about this answer. I'm tempted to give him- he's you, one Do you know what you've done there, don't you? Go on. You've put the nail in the coffin of, uh, Rockbusters. I warned you, I warned you for three weeks and you sort of bucked your ideas up for a little while. But Christ did Those are the worst you've ever done. Uh, the worst I've ever done. So, so uh, and didn't- just put D. And then buy and f buy and ferry, buy and buy and ferry, buy uh, uh, buy and ferry. So, is that it? Then aren't we doing it? Play record. Aren't we doing it anymore? I'm ashamed. You're an idiot. Are we doing it anymore? I'm just gonna keep saying you're an idiot. Play a record. Are we Carl, have you learnt nothing from Doctor Fox? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not so near the window. Huh? Aren't we doing it anymore? What you need to start working on it now because they're so good. You need to start working now for next Saturday. Aren't we doing it anymore? Just, I, I don't know. Aren't we doing it? Cardigans. You're the storm on XFM 104.9. Well, nearly the end of the show, but we wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't let them down, would we? You know what it is now, don't you? Oh! Chimpanzee that monkey news! <laughs> right. Now, whilst was in Cornwall. I wasn't online. I didn't no. have the internet, so it's like, oh, what am I going to do? And I didn't come back till yesterday. I thought there's loads going on that I don't know about in the monkey world and stuff. I was hoping to get some from the zoo that I was meant to be going to. Of course, that didn't happen. So I said to my dad, "Do you know anything about monkeys? Have you got any stories with monkeys?" Brilliant. This is a no. This is what Trevor McDonald does. <laughs> Turned out, he caught, caught the ten. He goes, <laughs> yeah. oh, I've got nothing. <laughs> Dad, anything happened? You got anything politics? Anything politics, Dad? <laughs> this isn't monkey news, I'm just giving you this free. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Uh, turned out one of his mates used to have a chimp. <laughs> right. Um, what do you mean one of his mates used to have a chimp? Well, two, two of his mates. Mind oh, you, sorry, yeah, I was, I, was, I, was, I was thinking it sounded a bit far-fetched living in Manchester-like, <laughs> but if there was two of them. He had a chimp, um, had to thump it in the head. <laughs> <laughs> For doing what? Answering back? <laughs> oh God! Tried it on with his wife. <laughs> I had to stop it in the end for trying it on with his wife! I love it, I love it, it's a proper fist fight in a pub in Manchester. Oh. I'd call him up but he's one of them who like swears all the time. Right. Oh. I mean, it'd be good. It'd be good to get him on. And just, let's interview him. Can we not interview him pre-record? We can bleep out the swear, and I'd love to hear his story. Do a lot of work. That. Yeah. What? Well, well, you, 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 well, we're not scared of work. No, obviously. I mean, I'll get myself if you can't be bothered. Yeah. Oh, you know, I, so. I have a word. I have a word. I saw it. Out. Yeah. Try yeah. To sort that out yeah. Next week. Sort um, that out. Yeah. Well, don't yeah. tell us the rest of the story then. Let's let him say it in his own. No, words. but there's another one as well. Uh, some. When fella... you say you can get him on, but he swears a lot, you mean the monkey? <laughs> 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 I'm assuming he's more coherent than your dad's mate. <laughs> but there's him, and there's some other fellow he knows who had a funny name. I'll have to find out because you'll love his name. But he was a drag artist. Yeah. And uh, I think he said he went. My dad went round one day. I don't know why. Went around there, knocked on the door, chimpanzered. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, I don't know what you're doing, mate. I don't know where this place you live, next door there's an horse in the front room. There's chimps mad, running round. It's mad. Anyway, uh <laughs> Chimpanzer <laughs> Is that it? Is that the end of the story? There's a chimpanzer in the door and that's the end. You sure it wasn't the drag artist before he shaved? No. You sure no, it wasn't your grand? Because oh. I like the really airy ones that decide they can be female impersonators. <laughs> yeah, your grand. <laughs> anyway, go on. Um, then. Is, this is the monkey news. So you got that for free. What's this going to be like, well, Steve? Let's have more jingles. Okay. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news extra. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, another phrase we've been talking about phrases today. Yeah, we have. Don't yeah. teach your granny when she's shaving. Yeah. Uh, don't teach your granny to suck eggs. Yeah. Uh, don't look horse in the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> don't let the chimpanzee the door if you're chucking your cock in. <laughs> <laughs> um, familiar with the 
phrase monkey business? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never heard that one before, Carl. That's brilliant. Right, well, it came about, this has been emailed in and I haven't really had a chance to look at it, so I'm just weighing it up now. Um, <laughs> God. Yeah. This is yeah, the yeah, biggest yeah, shambles yeah. on air, isn't it, really? Mm -hmm. I'm ashamed of it. it. I mean, what was Dr. Fox? Mm. Dr. Fox must have been really polite. He must have been thinking, I don't know how to put this. Mm. He, wa he, uh, he must have wanted to scream and go, you shouldn't be in the radio authority. My parents listen online, I can't look them in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think I've weighed it up. <laughs> Um, <laughs> long time ago, right? Yeah. In the, uh, Olden days, yeah. In Go the on. Amazon jungle. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Little family of monkeys in there. Mm-hmm. Right? Having a good life. Good. Right? Didn't have any predators in there. Right? So, they were loving it. Yeah. They had a load of food around them, they had loads of banana trees. Yeah. Right? Mm, um, no, I don't think so. <laughs> no, they did. Sorry. Just, yeah. Everything's going great, so, they're happy in that. They go out of bed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wake up in the morning, load of bananas gone. Ooh, hang on, interesting. Hold on, wait a minute. So, Amazon- <laughs> Either your dad's been around, or- Is it- this isn't the great Amazon banana robbery, is it? So anyway, turns out, it was another load of monkeys from another part of the island. From the rough bit. <laughs> <laughs> into a middle class area. Oh, oh that the ones is... with the earrings and the leather jackets. <laughs> oh, that is brilliant. <laughs> From a rough part of the island. <laughs> so, the monkeys thought, well, there's no point getting into a fight with them because they're harder than we are. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, and they carry chains. <laughs> so... <laughs> I love all this conjecture. they got flip knives and this tattoos. Go yeah. Go on. So, basically, they said, let's do some business with the bananas. Let's do some business with the bananas. <laughs> this is <a> shit! This is a <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, Christ! Right, calm down, we haven't oh, got much time left. Oh, God! What do you mean they said it? Forget it. No! Forget don't it. forget it! Carl, do not press that! Switch the record off. Switch the record off. Christ. Switch the record off, Carl. What, what are you talking about? What did they do? Oh. Let's do business on. with the bananas. Yeah. So. They said, well, rather than them coming robbing them, we'll, we'll flog them. <laughs> so, that got a stop to it then. The people, the monkeys came, they didn't have money. They said, give us some, mon you know, give us some bananas. Um, and it says uh, So what, they exchanged bananas for bananas? For, for, for berries and nuts. <laughs> so that's where the phrase monkey business <laughs> no, it's comes not. from. A little business no. to set up. Right, there, oh God, that's the end of that as well, so that's the end, that is a shame, that's the end of Rockbusters and Monkey News. Well done, you've done it in one show.